All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Jordan Foley. I will be presenting my research on graphene reinforced concrete on behalf of San Diego State University. So a little table of contents for our time today. Uh, we'll be going over what is graphene. We'll uh, begin with a brief introduction to the material. Uh, we'll be asking how graphene can help in uh, efforts towards concrete sustainability. Uh, we'll go over where the concrete industry stands with graphene. We could also discuss when can we see change with this new material. So what is graphene? A little bit of background. It's the first uh, isolated 2D material. So uh, it's an allotrope of carbon. It's an arrangement of carbon arranged in a hexagonal lattice structure. This gives it properties and makes it the thinnest, strongest, and most conductive material. Um, a little bit of history on it. It was first isolated uh, in 2004 at the University of Manchester. It was actually first uh, isolated by using sticky tape and applying it to a block of graphite, uh, repeatedly stripping layers until left with only one atom thick of this uh, hexagonal lattice. Uh, that was the first isolation of graphene, and this is uh, considered mechanical exfoliation. This would um, contribute to the Nobel Prize uh, for these two professors um, from the University of Manchester, awarded in 2010. Uh, going on to how graphene can help achieve feats in concrete sustainability, we have here uh, shown that graphene can take upon many different uh, shape and forms. Um, depending on whatever shape and form it can take, uh, we have different variabilities or um, factors, such as uh, the fabrication costs, uh, dispersion in some, uh, concrete or cement, um, the re reinforcement efficiency, uh, mechanical properties, and thermal and electric uh, properties as well. Um, it's important to notice that uh, there is some linkage between the dispersion levels or achieving a uniform dispersion of graphene within uh, cement uh, materials. Uh, this is linked to reinforcement efficiency. As you can see here, graphene oxide is actually a uh, water-soluble version of graphene, which uh, enhances its a dispersion factor, which is then linked to uh, the level of reinforcement efficiency. So going over this, we can. Um, it's important to notice we have variable factors for each type of graphene. And it's important to uh, consider what type of graphene should be used at a larger scale of the use of graphene. Um, with the use of graphene, uh, concrete can be affected by um, reducing low tensile strength, uh, affecting its permeability, uh, reducing brittleness, as well as uh, acid and sulfate resistance. As we continue to implement uh, graphene into concrete, we can uh, re reach reinforcement at a nanoscale. Uh, we can have more of a lighter concrete due to the reduction in supplementary material, such as reinforcing steel, cement, and sand. Um, it may also uh, contribute to thermal conductivity within concrete as well. Uh, this achieves a more th thermal stability in cases with uh, fire resistance in any buildings that would use this material. Uh, with the reduction of any supplemental uh, material, this contributes to a 2% uh, reduction in total global carbon emissions with the use of graphene reinforcement. So now we'll go over where the concrete industry stands with graphene. We have to understand the current roadblocks that un uh, are taking place with the rollout of graphene. So based off of literature, our first uh, roadblock that comes to mind would be cost. So primarily, the uh, roadblocks that contribute to cost would be the fabrication. Uh, there's ongoing research that uh, is bettering the methods in fabrication. Uh, it's currently costly, and um, there's it's a balance between cost and quality uh, in fabrication methods. And we also have to consider the cost effectiveness. Uh, due to the fact that concrete would uh, need a high amount of graphene, we would need a high amount of uh, quality graphene produced at a large scale. 
A solution for the cost roadblock would be to use the life cycle analysis for graphene. This would consider a cradle to grave analysis of all aspects, all costs and benefits of this material, and also physical research and more of an, to gain more of an understanding of this material. Our second roadblock we have here is quality. Um, we would have to understand more about how we can achieve more uniform uh, dispersion of this material within concrete. Uh, this is contributing to the effectiveness of the achieved results. Um, we have to better understand this material, and once again, this is done by increasing research and development of this material. Our final roadblock here we have is quantity. Uh, we, there's a price sensitivity as we need uh, graphene at large scale. Um, production and fabrication methods would have to be uh, confined and more understood and um, kind of narrowed down on what the concrete industry would need in, as far as fabrication methods. A solution to this quantity uh, roadblock would be to focus in on the sustainability uh, that we can gain with the use of graphene and innovation in fabrication as well. So a little more on this life cycle analysis. This considers all factors such as um, energy use, fabrication, and natural resource consumption and all other costs involved as well, as well as other environmental impacts that will be uh, taking place with the use of graphene. This is the next step in my research that will be conducted. I wanted to highlight a special um, fabrication method that's recently come to light. Is that's uh, flash graphene. This is a method that uh, uses any carbon-containing waste and converts it to this gra pristine graphene uh, within 10 milliseconds. So what it does is you can put this carbon-containing solid waste within a cathode and superheating it to 3,000 Kelvin in 10 milliseconds, and it's. Uh, converted to pristine graphene within that uh, time. So this is important for the concrete industry because it actually, compared to other fabrication methods, it uh, offers a very good form of graphene, which is turbostratic. Uh, it's easy to peel apart the layers of graphene, which is better for um, cementitious materials or composite materials. An overview of this uh, fabrication method uh, it would be uh, costing about $30 per ton, according to literature. Um, concentrations could be as little as 0.02% of cement weight and also increase strength by 35%. Um, this is, the main takeaway of this would be that it can use any um, carbon-containing waste, from uh, food waste to rubber tires, anything that would be high in carbon. So when can we see change? we'd first have to acknowledge our main takeaways. Uh, graphene is currently small scale. Its uh, fabrication is currently taking place mostly at academic institutions, and it's slowly coming to light in the commercial area. Um, it's currently, uh, the incentive for producing with this material is not high as uh, there is not a lack of economic revenue at the moment, but it's given with literature that the concrete industry may um, benefit from the use of this material. So going over a little bit more of research statistics, uh, the leading driver for the production of this material is electronics. Okay. Um, electronics, there are other industries that also are driving the research and understanding this material such as biomedical or um, anything that is, uh, there's a lot of areas that push the advancement of this material. Um, so I've gained that uh, as we discover more about this material, we can uh, increase production of it, and therefore the price would be lowered as we um, produce higher amounts of this material. So as a conclusion, we went over how uh, as with an increase in research and understanding this material, the production will increase as well as the cost. 
or the cost maybe decrease over time. Um, graphene is shown to have high demand in several areas. This may contribute to the um, feasibility within the concrete sector. Uh, we will be using the life cycle analysis to uh, further analyze the feasibility of this material. Uh, we introduced flash jewel heating, which offers a competitive advantage in sustainability. Um, and our last uh, point is that uh, the industry must uh, kind of adapt to infrastructure and fabrication methods to uh, adapt to this new material. Here are my references. I would like to uh, extend my gratitude prof to Professor Ferroni of San Diego State University and Professor Mir Mirvalad of uh, Iran University of Science and Technology. Thank you.